Good morning. Welcome to the solution videos to problems A1, A2, and A3 in round one of the 2021 Facebook Hacker Cup. So in this problem, Tiny Timmy the Typist has some keyboard which consists of many characters, but importantly the characters F, uh, O, and X. And he's going to type some string that consists only of these characters. Now, since Tiny Timmy the Toddler is very, uh, very tiny, he can only use um, his left hand to type characters X and F, and he can use his right hand, but with that he can only type characters O and F. So in particular, he can't type the X with his right hand because it's too far left, and he can't type the O with his left hand because it's too far right. Uh, now, in addition to typing this stuff, he's also eating a popsicle, and he's going to be doing that with his other hand, and of course he wants to minimize the amount of sticky residue he leaves on his keyboard while doing this typing. So he wants to switch hands as few times as possible, for which hand he's using to type these letters. Um, so let's do a quick example of one possible string. Now, of course, the string we're going to type will vary between problems A1, A2, and A3. It gets more, more complicated and more difficult. But for some simple string, we can see an idea of how this might work. So let's look at the string oxfox, because it's both interesting to say and looks kind of cool. So for the O, we have to use our right hand. So let's use our right hand for this. For the, this X, we have to use our left hand. For the F, we can do whichever we want, but uh, since we had previously used our left hand, let's not switch hands here, so we'll keep using our left hand. Now we have an O, which again we have to use our right hand for, and then an X, which we have to use our left hand for. The total number of switches in this case will be one switch here, one switch here, and one switch here. So we do three switches, which obviously we want to minimize. Um, now, in this case, if we're only interested in solving problem A1, we can basically do exactly what I've done here. Uh, every time we see an X or an O, we might be forced to switch. And if we are, we'll increment the count of the number of times we've switched. If we see an F, we'll just keep using whichever hand we were previously using. The only case this doesn't explicitly handle is if the string starts with some Fs. So in those cases, we can ignore any leading Fs because We'll just, as soon as we see a character that isn't an F, we'll use that to determine which character or which hand we would start using. Right, so if the first non-F character is an O, then we'll start using, uh, using our right hand, and then we'll use our right hand to type all of those Fs, and then also that first O. Uh, and again, the Fs at the end also don't matter, because whatever we, would use, we were using before those Fs, uh, we would continue using that hand earlier. Okay, so that handles that. I guess if the string is all Fs, then we can just ignore it because we can use either hand for the entire string. So that's the solution to problem A1. A2 is a little bit more difficult because in A2, we're not interested in just this one string. We're interested in all possible substrings of this string. So here, um, not necessarily all possible unique substrings, but all possible substrings. So we want to type O, OX, OXF, um, and then we want to type this OX multiple times. So we want to type it once in this case for this substring, but also once for this substring. So we want to double count um, the number of times that it's used. And for each of these possible substrings, we want to know the total number of times we'll have to switch hands after typing all of them. Okay, so how do we solve this? Well, um, what we can do is we can process this character by character, and we can maintain a few things. So when we process some prefix, let's say we've processed each of these characters, we're going to store what will change when we go from if this were our input string, OXF, to if our input string were OXFO. And a couple things might change. So um, we want to know for how many of the strings here were we forced to use an X, right? So how many of these strings ended in an X? Or were we using, I guess, for how many of these strings is the last character that wasn't an F that we typed um, an X? So how many Xs do we have in this case uh, at this point here? We also want to know, I guess, how many Os we have in this case. And then also we want to know how many undecideds do we have. Let's fill out each of these as an example. So um, there are three possible strings that we're interested in that end at this position. And only strings that end in this position are strings that adding this O uh, we would be concerned with. So we have 
this string here, this string here, and this string here. Of these, how many of these would we be using the, the X hand with? Um, that would be two. For the string that starts with an O, we type an O, but then we have to switch to the X hand. So we're using the X hand for that. For the string that starts with an X, we type an X, and then we're using the X hand uh, through the F. So there are two strings here that use the X. How many undecideds? Well, there's the one for the F. We don't know whether we want to be using our left hand or our right hand. We want to be using whichever one comes next. So we have one undecided. And then we have no O's because we saw an X before we saw an O. So obviously there are none of those. Um, we also want to keep track of something else, though, which is some of these strings might have, invert, might have times where we have to switch in them. Um, in particular, if you look at, at this string here, this string does have a time where you have to switch in it. So this is, we'll call this like per step, is what I want to call it. But what this basically means is if we take another step, we'll introduce some more substrings. And even if this additional step is like an F, so even if this additional step doesn't directly cause us to make any more hand changes, we're going to have to type more substrings. Some of these might include difficult parts earlier on in the string, which would make us require like having to change hands. So this per step will be for all substrings ending at this point, how many changes do all of those have? Uh, in this case, the answer would be one. Um, finally, the last thing we want to store is the total. Uh, and this is exactly what it sounds like across all possible substrings that we've seen ending here or earlier, how many hand changes are there? And this will be the final answer. So in this case, um, well, uh, one, two, I think the total is two. But there's a lot going on here, so I might be missing some. But I think that I think these are this would be our state after processing this F. Okay, when we process the O, what happens? Well, all of the X's and the undecideds and the O's will turn into O's. In addition, the per step will increase by all of the X's. So this will be by plus two. And then the total will increase by the per step because we had this string earlier, so we have to pay for this. So this will increase by the plus one. It'll also increase by the number of x's because each of these will create an additional hand switch that we have to pay immediately. So plus two here. Uh, and that's what this, this transition looks like if we take just a no. So we can maintain what each of these look like. Um, we also have this transition that we have to calculate if we take an F, uh, which is pretty simple. Uh, it's, it's pretty similar, I mean. So uh, we'll talk about that really briefly. If instead this were an F, what would this look like? So if it were an F, we would have the same number of X's. Anything that was an X up to this point would stay an X. So this would still be two. Um, any undecided would stay undecided, but we would add one to it because we now have this additional F character, right? this additional substring that's just this would, would be undecided. How many O's do we have? Well, the same number. Anything that was previously an O, it'll stay an O. Uh, the per step won't change. We won't incur any additional cost because we might have previously difficult substrings, but the substring we, we now add has a cost of zero, and none of these other substrings are any more difficult, but they are just as difficult as they were earlier, so this doesn't change. Uh, and then the total will increase by per step. So we, we copy the total over, but we have to add per step. Okay, and this is the solution to problem A2. We want to implement this for the F, the X, and the O, uh, which isn't, isn't too difficult. It should be relatively easy to implement, but you just have to be careful keeping track of all these variables. It's a bit messy. Awesome. And then problem A3. Well, problem A3 is a bit more difficult. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a little tricky. So for problem A3, again, we want to consider all substrings of some possible string. The difference is for A3, this string can be very, very large. Uh, the string that is, is given to us is only 
a million digits long. However, this string can have periods in it. And when we have a period, let's look at, let's look at this string now. Um, actually, we'll leave this here because it's, it's helpful for understanding the solution. But we might be given the string, for instance, OXF period period. What this means, every time we have a period, we want to double the existing string. So this would look like OXF. Then we see a period, so we double it. We have OXF. Then we see another period, so we double all six of these. So we have OXF, OXF. And you can imagine, with just a few periods, we can get a very, very, very long, complicated string, um, which means this can be exponential in size. So we, we can't even really consider how big this thing gets. So, how do we handle it? Well, uh, we're going to go back to our solution to problem two. Now, I should mention before we start here, there are two possible solutions to this. One of the solutions requires a little bit more um, being smart and a little bit less knowledge of particular competitive programming tricks. Um, I am not qualified enough to talk about what it would be like to be smart because I'm not that kind of person. I'm a very unintelligent individual. However, if you are smart, you can read the editorial solution and that might make more sense to you. Um, for everybody else, if you're still watching, welcome. And the other possible solution is we can use this thing called Matrix Expo, which is really great. It lets us only use this A2 solution, but lets us do it um, much faster. So here's how that works. We can notice that this transition here only requires the variables x's, undecided, o's, per step, total, and the constant 1. Right, so this is just the number one, literally just the number one. It doesn't change, it's always just the number one. Uh, and this is equal to one, and it's always gonna stay being the number one. So what we can notice is each of these things in both, in both cases will, whether we read an, F, read an F or an O, um, in both cases, we're going to have some linear recurrence for every possible variable based only on these six variables. So in other words, it's, it's like a closed set. Um, things that were important stay important, and things that weren't stay unimportant. Let me show you how we can see what these matrices look like. Uh, and, then, and then all this is is some matrix expo. So I'll talk about what that means in, in just a minute here. So what is the new total equal to after we read an O? Um, well, we have the previous total. That will certainly contribute. Also, per step will contribute. Also, every time we had an x, that will need to turn into an o, so that'll contribute as well. OK, new per step. Well, the old per step will certainly be part of that. Also, every time we have an x, that'll be part of it. Uh, what about new o's? Any previous o will now become an o. Anything that was previously undecided will become an o. Anything that was an x will become an o. Uh, and then also we have this additional O that we just saw. That'll also be an O. New undecided. That'll just be zero. Anything, if once we read an O, everything is decided. Every, every substring ending here needs to be an O. Same thing with X. There will be no X's. Everything here needs to be an O because no matter what the substring was, since we have to type an O, we have to switch to the O hand. And then one, the constant one, will just be equal to the constant one. That's what happens if we read an O. What if we read an F? Um, I'm, it's possible I'm missing something here, so you can check the code, but I'm, this seems, seems right to me. What if we read an F? The, the total will be total plus per step. Nothing else changes with it. New per step will just be old per step um, because no strings get any more difficult. The new O's will just be the old new O's. New undecided will be the old undecided plus one, plus the string we're about to consider. Uh, new X's will just be the old X's, and the constant one stays as the constant one. I think this should handle everything. Um, but again, I guess double check my code to make sure these matrices are complete here, because I just kind of did this live. So not zero chance something, something doesn't work. Uh, OK, yeah, so these are the two transition matrices. What does this mean? Well, we'll move this out of the way here. We can imagine storing our state as just as six variables, right? So we can store just this total. We can store per step. We can store 
um, X's, undecideds, O's, and then the constant 1. We can store this in a matrix. So this is our, our matrix. And then we can take this and we can multiply on this side here by some 6 by 6 transition matrix. So this is what our state is, and then we multiply it by some other matrix. So when we do this left multiply, this will convert our existing matrix into a new matrix that's again 6 tall and 1 wide. Um, but this will be what the matrix looks like after doing one step. So we have, this is our state. We have like our, our state. And then we can multiply the state by this transition 1. So this would be, let's say we read an O, what happens? Uh, and then if we can multiply our state by maybe we read an X, so this is some new transition 2. And then we maybe we read an F, so this is some transition 3. Uh, and then we read an F again, so this is a transition 4. And then let's say we want to double it. So if we want to reapply each of these operations, we want to read a new, um, I forget what I said, but like X, O, F, F. We want to read a new set of each of these. We want to reapply each of these transition matrices. So that would look like this. We would have another T1, uh, T2, T3, and T4. Now, one thing to notice is when we do these multiplications, we're doing them like this. This is the, the order of operations here. However, multiplication is, um, I think, associative is the word I'm looking for. It's associative, it's also transitive. So what we can do is instead of doing the multiplications strictly this times this, and then this times this, this times this, we can do the multiplications like this. This means we can take our transition matrix, and if we wanted to do everything twice, we just square the matrix. So if you know matrix multiplication, that will allow us to do this pretty easily. Uh, we just square this matrix, and that is how we handle reading in a dot. So the code winds up actually being super simple. The most difficult part of the code is just generating these matrices, which I had on the whiteboard by hand. And once you have those, then you're set. Uh, that's it. Again, there's a completely different solution that doesn't require Matrix Expo uh, in the editorial. So if you're interested in that, you can, you can read the analysis there. Uh, and that might be helpful if this is a bit more a bit too magic-y for you if it uses things that you don't really understand yet. Okay, that's all for this problem. Hope you enjoyed the problems and hope you enjoyed the contest. And uh, if you performed well, then I'll see you on the scoreboard in round two. Thanks for watching and goodbye.